Hold up, it's the way it. Call up and you weigh it. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, dropping knowledge, we ain't playing. When you think it's by the end, shit, we crank it up again. Hold up, weigh it. Call up and you weigh it. Now we get to scrutinize everything you're saying. Switching up the topics, dropping knowledge, we ain't playing. And we do this every day. Never ever duck a fade. Hold up. Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, thank you, thank you, thank you very much again for joining, you know what I'm saying, the new, the new and improved, the weigh-in, the weigh-in with Francis and Greg, what up, what up, Greg, I almost what called you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, what's, what's going on, everybody, you know, we're back with a new show, it's called The Weigh-In, and that's what we're here for, man, we want to weigh in on everything that's going on in the world of boxing, and um, we're waiting for your comments, and uh, let's chop it up, man. Let's talk about some boxing, man. I love it, man. I love it. I love it. And I hope you all out there, man, as you can see, you know what I'm saying, you can hit a blog talk. You call us on blog talk. The number is 914-205-5532. Call us and let us know what you, what you think on the topic we're talking about today. And obviously, we got to talk about, first and foremost, is Ryan King Rye Garcia. Yeah. Who some would say was baptized by fire. <laughs> yeah, Got definitely. A new man and showed metal. What is your thoughts on the uh, on the performance of Ryan Garcia against Luke Campbell from the UK? Man, yo, it was a good performance, man. Like you said, I mean, he went through that fire and um he got knocked down. And he got back up, man. Like, definitely, I wasn't expecting him to be in that kind of adversity because everything was kind of built for him to kind of, you know, not walk through Luke Campbell, but, you know, handle him like he ended up doing in the end. But um, the knockdown I didn't see coming. But um, shout out to him, man. He showed a lot of heart getting up. And, um, you know, kudos to him. He passed the test. You know, he faced the solid competitor that had been in there with other world champions, Olympic gold medalists. And he did what he needed to do, man. So, um, he passed the test, but you know, there's some things to be improved on, I think, and we'll probably touch on that a little bit uh during this show. Yeah, life definitely. Lessons. Yo, life lessons, what up? Appreciate you so very much, man, for your continual support. Um, one of our definitely day one supporters, and uh Absolutely. I know I personally appreciate you, and I know Greg does as well. Shout out to everybody out there, man. Roll call, where you from? Where you at watching, listening around the world. Let us know what's going on. We're talking about King Ryan Garcia, you know what I'm saying, with a stellar performance over Luke Campbell. Um, Ryan Garcia, his uh his his stardom is 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 rising. It's growing, yeah. it's growing by the day. Um, and I gotta give him credit, man. I gotta give him credit because he got it from the mud. You know what I'm saying? A kid from Victorville, California, you know what I'm saying, did it from out of his garage, man. He went in his garage and and uh he 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 started to work he started to work and started to put things into into perspective and you know what i'm saying linked up with golden board promotions and got some fights going and now he's kind of learned from some other uh social media influencers how to properly get himself out there and he's done so man he's been on you know cold, uh what is it uh is it hard as balls if i'm not mistaken it's a uh, cold hard fat it's with kevin hart you've seen that one in the cold top I think, yeah, you know, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I believe I know what you're talking about. Yeah, with Kevin Hart. Cool. Yo, Sir Bishop, salute. Happy New Year to you, man. If you want to call in, you can hit me up on Blog Talk, man. Blog Talk. I'm going to put the number right here. You can call in. You know what I'm saying? Wish us. You can be one of our first callers. Who want to be one of the first callers for our new show, The Way In? Yeah, for sure. Happy New Year to everybody, man. I forgot to mention that we're in a new year, 2021. So happy New Year to everybody, man. Hopefully things will be a lot better this year. Definitely. Definitely. Um, 2020 was one of those years that uh, you haven't had in a while. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the end of a decade. Yeah, that's true. That's right. It's the end of a decade, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um and um a lot of crazy things went down but uh, we're thankful that we made it into 2021 and um life lesson says salute a happy new year to you as well sir bishop um but yeah man grind garcia started off the year with a bang and i'm i'm, I'm super i'm super excited for where his career is headed next 
Um, yeah. We always said that uh, uh, he was considered the IG, the IG a boxer, the YouTube boxer. You know what I mean? Like how Jake Paul and Logan Paul are being uh, are being labeled the YouTube boxers. He was kind mm-hmm. of in that category of being a real boxer. So, right. but but I take it as that's just people jealous of the work that he's put in to get to where he has got to. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't there when he was making his Cobra his Cobra bags and practicing in the garage. They wasn't there when he was doing. You know what I'm saying? Taking his model pics to try to get. You know what I'm saying? The, the, these young females to 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 come to his page and to build his stardom. Now his stardom is growing. Um, everybody's starting to realize now, but you got to catch it from when he when he was starting to do it from out the mud. You get a better understanding of 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 and appreciate. You know what I'm saying? The grind to now he's looking at big money fights. Absolutely. Absolutely. But before we get into the big money fights, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's talk about the fight itself. Right, right. How did Luke Campbell look to you? Because, you know, everybody a little quarantine thick for, for athletes. Some of them have lost their, their titles on the scale because of quarantine. They didn't get to train properly because of the whole shutdown of the coronavirus. What's your take on how Luke Campbell looked? And I'll give him my name. Yeah, how he looked to me, I mean, he looked poised. You could obviously... You know, he had the the stature of having that experience. He'd been in there world champions, but um, he just didn't seem super sharp to me. And I felt like he was kind of, um, what, what, how should I say? Like he wasn't pulling the trigger, I think, um, like he has in the past. I mean, I don't know if that had to do with him having COVID and, you know, you know, getting trained back up for this fight. I don't know. He didn't look, um, he didn't look horrible, but he just didn't look himself to me. But I mean, but he still got that knockdown on Garcia. So I mean, he showed his medal. He showed his, you know, his class. And um, you know, definitely, maybe the layoff, maybe the COVID has something to do with it. Maybe he was looking a little bit soft, but um, he was still game though. He was still obviously game because he was able to, um, he's able to land shots on Garcia. Um, he, I think he was giving him problems um with his footwork just a little bit. You know what I mean? So, um, he didn't look horrible but he definitely didn't look 100 himself man like how did you see him looking in there luke is always a tricky fighter luke is a tricky yeah. fighter because he fights with that like that olympic style point system type of fight style but right. with a pro style mixed into it which is a little bit weird but he's able to um he keeps that that the hand dangled out there so that's, that's right a distraction in itself he just he just got it out there you know he pop it from time to time um throwing his jab, um, wide stance, you know, just kind of awkward to get in, get into and hit. Um, but you can clearly tell in the fight that, um, Ryan Garcia was definitely the more aggressive fighter. Yes. The harder puncher, even though he went down from a shot, yeah. flush on the chin, landed arms folded underneath him. Wasn't sure if he was going to get back up. Right. So, um, Luke Campbell, he looked slower than he did against Lomachenko. I must say, so I'm not sure if that's because of King, uh, because of Ryan Garcia, or right. that's because of the, the the COVID slowdown of everything. He might not have got prepared as well. But I can right, definitely right. he was he, he was a lot. He was lost. I wouldn't say a lot, but he was slower. Yeah, that's what I was feeling too, man. I, I mean, I use the word like sharp, like, but yeah, he wasn't looking as crisp. And I agree with you. I agree with that. And I I, I definitely felt like when he had Ryan Garcia hurt that he didn't really jump on Ryan Garcia to see. Yeah. Get him yeah. Out of there. Maybe he felt like Ryan Garcia recovered right away. But if, if, if you go down from a heavy knockdown like that, likely is that your legs not really under you right away. Um, you know, you're still trying to catch your bearings. A lot of thoughts going through your mind because you know what I'm saying? You the A side, you came out on the throne, you entertaining the people. And now you're on your backside. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's, you know what I'm saying? yeah. So, um, a lot of things roll through your mind immediately. So, um, I felt like Luke Campbell should have capitalized on that opportunity to see if he can get a young fighter who has never been in that situation before and right. see if he can press him out. Yeah, that would have been the time to test that out, like, see what he does. You know what I mean? That would be the time to do it. Risking getting knocked out. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I because agree. I don't remember how much time was left in the round. I don't know if like the round ended right when that happened, but he should have jumped on him anyway. And even into the next round, he should have just came out and just like you know walk him down, just go at him, see what he's made of. 
But woulda, shoulda, coulda, man. Woulda, yeah. shoulda, coulda. You know what <laughs> I mean? He, he shoulda, he coulda, but he didn't. Um, and Ryan Garcia definitely got up. He started to get um, get his legs back onto him and more confidence. And the confidence, he definitely showed it because he started to come forward, throwing yeah. hands more, um, quick, fast, hitting hitting Luke on, on, the, on the elbow, on the shoulder, on the glove. He was just hitting him to let him know I'm here. And um, – just before that, he was hit with a body shot that Ryan Gar- Ryan Luke Campbell hit Ryan Garcia with a body shot that he didn't necessarily appreciate, mm. and in he returned his own. That yeah. was that patented team Reynoso and Canelo left hook <laughs> to the body. I know I wanted to ask you that if you definitely seen that influence in the fight, man. Listen, listen. <laughs> I, I don't know if anybody watched Canelo the way he fights, but you can definitely tell the growth in Ryan Garcia and since he joined that team. Um, yeah. He, he, he looks more confident. You know what I'm saying he around, quote unquote, pound for pound, the best, you know what I'm saying, fighter in boxing. And he's giving you tips. He's giving you tricks and how to do things. So uh, it was great to see that he can execute. It's about the execution. So you can right. do it in the gym, but you can leave it in the gym as well. You got to bring it to the ring on fight night under the lights, the bright lights, and execute. And yeah. that's, that to me, that's more, <laughs> that to me is more important than anything else, man. Yeah, no, I hear you, man. That's, 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 um, that's when um, you got to do it, man, under those lights when everybody's looking at you. So you, um, doing it in the gym is one thing, but when you got those fans looking at you and you on that stage, whether it's pay per view or just a big platform, like, um, the zone you know you got to show out sir bishop's comment there uh good fight good fight for young ryan to learn from definitely definitely i mean i think i think he was a little bit flat-footed and the funny thing is first thing when he got knocked down first thing i thought of i was like what if that was tank or what if that was tia Fima, that <laughs> that's the first thing that entered my mind man like <laughs> you know would he be getting back up or you know would he be, you know, getting up with a stanky leg? You know what I mean? So um, that's the first thing that popped into my mind because obviously, you know, after the fight, you know, he was calling out um, Gervonta, you know. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But, um, yeah, that's the first thing that entered my mind. But it definitely was a good test for him, man. Like, you can't complain, man. He did his thing. He showed heart. He got back up, and he got the sensational stoppage. I mean, that was a body shot to remember. Um, and when you got your opponent down on all fours, <laughs> you know, you know, that's saying something. When you got your opponent wanting to get up and can't. And can't. Yeah, exactly. Luke was trying to use everything in his being to get up. And he just, yeah. that, that, that liver shot, man, just stops yeah. you. That delayed reaction too. Cause he had a, he had like, boom, he went, took a step and went, oh no, that didn't feel good. Mm-mm. Yeah. <laughs> mm, that didn't feel good. Yeah. Absolutely, man. And that and also it, it, another thing in my mind when Hopkins, when Bernard Hopkins stopped his promote Ryan Garcia's promoter, you know, De La Hoya, man. It was that same kind of delayed reaction. You know, they take a step back and the pain kind of comes in afterwards, man. So, you know, I hope I never have to feel a shot like that, man. But it looks it looks very painful, man. Looks super painful. Yeah. But yeah, so um, we we definitely got to talk about the the whole celebration in the ring, <laughs> jumping on, uh, uh, Eddie Reynoso with legs wrapped around him. He almost busts his head. His dad had to jump in there and grab him. Uh, you know, he's throwing himself up in the air while Reynoso's holding him. Like he looked, yeah. you know, complete elation. But that looked a little. They got to work on the celebration. Yeah, they got definitely they, they definitely got to keep that in house with the celebration like that, and, yeah. and um, yeah, they got to do something different, man. Ryan, I I know it was your moment, but man, <sighs> I know. Yeah, man, do do something else, man. Do <laughs> come on, do. Ryan, man, you yeah. got to do something else, man. Jump on the ropes, throw your hands up, but that whole hip thrusting, jumping on, you know what I mean? Oh man, you can you see yourself doing something like that? Absolutely not. You After know, a, a big win in whatever parts of your life, hell no, nah, I ain't jumping on nobody like that, man. Would you jump nah. on your daddy like that right now? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. We high fiving, man. We high fiving. Yo, are we dapping up or something? <laughs> we dapping up like your dap, man. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm not jumping off. That, you know what? Though? <laughs> to be fair to Ryan, you, I, I, we haven't been in that type of a situation where we felt that type of relation with the model. I, well, I don't know, man. I don't. I just, I still can do it though. I, I, still I can. Do it. And yo, but shout out to him, man. Like he, he's a young dude, so I mean, I'm sure he's hearing, you know, you know, he's probably getting a little bit of uh. Well, he's hearing it all right, but I mean, it's whatever. He's a young guy; he'll bounce back. Everybody still likes him. <laughs> he Sir is. Bishop, so yeah, go yeah. ahead. Oh yeah, let me just read um Sir Bishop's comment um. When the top guys start mixing it up, I want to see how they react after they get dropped for the first time. Absolutely, man. Like all those things are experiences, and he reacted well. You know, he reacted well to it, and, um, you know, kudos to him for getting up, man, because that's the toughest thing to do in boxing because at some point in your career, you know, these guys, you're going to get hit with a good shot. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get rocked, and it's basically what you do after that, you know. Even even the greats like Floyd Mayweather, they get hit with good shots, and it's what you do after. You know what I mean? So, you know, salute to him, and he just needs to work on it so he doesn't get hit with that shot again, you know, or too many times or, you know, whether he – works on it whether he could roll with shots like that you know whatever he needs to do um you know get back in the gym and work on those things man but definitely a good experience for him. he left the chin up in the air and um luke campbell yeah. he touched it um but he didn't i don't i don't feel like he touched it with with any intention to to hurt ryan so to speak nope. i, I want to be very careful with my words here but rather he touched him Kind of like okay, like this is not a knockout punch, but this is like a this is just a this is just part of my combination, you know. And it happened to clip yeah. him and he dropped him. It wasn't uh, it wasn't a, a, a deliberate like this shot. What I hit him with is gonna drop him. Does that yeah. make sense? No, it may it makes perfect sense. I think he he threw the shot because that was a shot open to throw. But like you said, I don't think it was with any knockout intention. It just it caught him perfectly, you know. And a lot of guys probably may have gone down from that shot. It just it was just there and it happened and you know it is what it is but yeah i don't think he threw it with um he didn't definitely throw it with that kind of tank you know veracity you know where every punch is to like knock you out you know what i mean with it was that just intention, huh? with that intention no i don't think he threw with that intention so i i completely feel what you're saying with that um i think if he did it might have been a different story you know i think he just threw the shot that was open to take and and it dropped him you know I love it. I love it. And um, he bounced back like a true yeah. champ. They're showing a true champ. And um, he stopped his opponent. And uh, after the celebration, obviously the talk, because Devin Haney was in the building, and Devin Haney has two mandatory, one right. being Mike Garcia and one being Javier Fortuna. Now, if you want to double back on it, uh -huh. Ryan Garcia – is supposed to well that's the fight they're looking to make because both fighters are on the zone kind of right. communicate with uh eddie hearn and golden boy and so on and so forth in in instead of that fight being the fight that uh uh to be made ryan garcia is looking at tank davis right tank davis being the money guy in the division in my opinion of course he's looking at tank davis yeah of course he's looking because it was just recently that he was disputed with Oscar about payment, about mm. not being paid correctly. He was very uh he was ready to, you know, what I'm saying to walk out on the contract and do all this different stuff um just to get a little bit more money. He had to fight mm. just to get a little bit more paper. So I guess the sexier matchup uh would be against Javante Tank Davis, but he does have a mandatory. How do you feel about him calling out Tank with his mandatory, right? there in the building um was that right for him because i don't i don't agree that he should have overlooked devin haney with devin haney being the champion but the wbc champion ranking with franchise and and regular champion and interim champion is is confusing it can yeah. be confusing even yeah. though Reese yeah. man tries his best to uh explain it so we understand it's still confusing uh -huh. Yeah, still confusing with Teofimo Lopez, who's technically, according to the explanation of the WBC, mm -hmm. Ullman, is undisputed. Right. <laughs> yeah. But you can't win the franchise. Well, I take you. You could win the franchise, but have a mandatory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 
when you have the you don't you don't have a mandatory. But right. then Haney, who has the, the WBC regular title, has all the mandatory. Has two mandatories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it is. WBC silver champion in Ryan Garcia. Yeah, it's it's very confusing. And I mean, even us who like we follow it. You know, it's confusing to us. So we could just imagine, you know, a casual fan saying, what do you mean there's like three belts in the same division, in the same organization? You know, so I can see the confusion. But back to your question about, um, you know, Ryan calling out Gervonta versus um, calling out um, Devin Haney. Um, me personally, I think he should have. Um, I think he should go to Devin Haney route because I don't think he's ready for tank. You know, as good as a performance as that was. Um, I don't think he's ready for tank and um, get the belt. Go try and get the belt from Devin Haney, man. That's a good fight right there. I don't know if he's hesitant to do that because of their history or, you know, does he just want to go for the money? You know, the money's going to always be there with tank, man. So, I mean, get a belt, get the actual belt fight. Devin Haney, you're his mandatory. Don't disrespect the dude like that, man. You know, everybody kind of dancing around Devin Haney and like, you know, like nobody wants to fight him, man. Like he wants to fight all these guys. He wants to fight Tio Fimo. He, he He's ready and willing to fight um, uh, Ryan Garcia, man. I'd love to see that fight. But um, I heard so I read something yesterday about they said um, Ryan Garcia, he's clout chasing by uh, calling out Gervonta. You know, mm-hmm. well, I guess boxing clout chasing you know i mean he already right. has the social media stuff but as far as like inside of boxing you know it's a clout chase to call out um javante davis he should definitely fight uh devin haney man now what do you think about that like who do you want to see him fight first i i want him to see i want to see him fight devin haney for yeah. the mere reason that they're in the same promotional company one and two Let's just let's just clear up. It's the same thing where I want Teal, you know what I'm saying, versus um Devin Haney. Because yeah. there there is not there isn't not another title that is separating undisputed. That's now right. let me tell y'all something that you don't know. If Bud Crawford or Big Fish, Big EJ had the WBA title, I would be calling for undisputed right away. Yeah. Right away. The difference for me is that 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 title that Pacquiao is holding is that is that last chip. Right yeah. now, the only thing that separates undisputed at 135 clearly is the fight between Devin Haney, Teofimo Lopez, Ryan Garcia. Yeah, pretty much, man. That's it. But definitely, I want to see the fight I want to see is Tank Davis versus Ryan Garcia. That is big money fight. That's gonna make um, that's gonna make um, um. I want to see all of them, man. I want to see all of them. Oh, there's so many mix. I'm not man. Even pick, man. I ain't gonna. <laughs> I want to see all of them, man. Because as I sit back and think about it, I really want to see all these guys fight each other, man. I really want to see all these guys fight each other because they the goods. You guys. Yeah. Some matches there you want to read. So we got where do we leave off? Uh, PD said, uh, Francis, I thought <laughs> I thought you was boxing eagle without the shades. Boy, you tripping. <laughs> <laughs> I get that a lot though, but nah, man, I'm Francis. You go. <laughs> and he has another. He has another two comments. That one thirty five is flames right now. Ryan versus Tank or Haney. I want to see both. I agree. I mean, I want to see both. Um, I want to see all of them. I want to see Teal fight Tank and. And um, Devin Haney and Ryan, I mean, you know, any of those combinations, you know, is definitely a good matchup, you know, with definitely a toss up of which one should go first. Because, I mean, there's, like we just talked about, there's mandatories, there's there's the money, there's undisputed, you know, so it's like, which <laughs> which direction do you go with everything? But um, Teofimo, I mean, I would want to be undisputed, so I would go after Haney, you know, I think that's a good fight to get made. You know, and Haney's just waiting there saying, listen, I'm I'm the missing, I'm the missing piece for anybody being undisputed. So he's like, you know, come get me. You know what I mean? So I don't know, man. Right now, 135 is in in Fuego. In Fuego. They remember, you gotta remember, they, there was just a little poll that was put up about the Fab Four 
the Fab Four being uh, Marvelous Marvin Hagler, Tommy the Hitman Hearns, Robert Duran, and Sugar Ray Leonard. The Fab Four. They had the Ryan Four. Flash Garcia or Ryan King Rai Garcia. They had Javante Tank Davis, Devin the Dream Haney, and Neo Fimo. Tio Fimo Lopez. And and the four. 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 The Fab Four. Fab Four. Fab Four. I think, four. I think they're missing somebody, man. And they're you know, I, 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 somebody. I know who you know, and I know who I know. <laughs> who we talking about, man? <laughs> they definitely missing somebody. Put some respect on that man's name. His name is Sean Stevenson. How y'all leave him off the list? Yeah. How y'all leave him off the list? I think he even made a comment. Uh, I think it was like ESPN ringside that put it out. And I think he commented like, what do you mean for? You know, like how they not call in for his name. And then he's the one guy that name that doesn't get called by the other fighters. None of these guys mentioned Shakur Stevenson, man. For whatever reason, I guess they know. You know, all these guys have sparred, I guess, or some of them have sparred each other at some point. So they know what's up with Shakur Stevenson. You know what I mean? They know what he brings to the table. They d- they definitely know what's up. But how would you list yours? List yours for me. Because I list mine. I got Devin Haney and Sugar Ray Leonard. I got... Oh, that's what you're saying. Like, they match them. Like, they're trying to compare the fighter to that era. I don't know if they're going to, but I'm going to compare that. I'm going to put my comparison that I see. I got oh. Ryan Garcia as Tommy Hitman's turn with the height. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, 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 okay. and, and, and the fast hands and, and the power. Right? Okay. I got... I got um I got I got uh Tank as Marvin Marvelous Hagler. Yeah, you know, that's how I was thinking. Uh, knockout power, he gets hit, but uh he starts you if he has to, you know what I'm saying? He'll take a punch to start you. Spray yeah. starch. You know what spray starch is? We all know what spray starch is, man. Okay, stretched him. But um, and then I got Tio Fimo as uh, uh as Robert Duran, hands of stone. Hands I'm not of, sure yeah. if you can hit as hard as hands of stone, but He's definitely showing that he got some pop. Yeah. How would you list yours? I would, I'm with you, except I would replace Ryan Garcia with Shakur Stevenson, who was not on that list, but I would replace him as a comparison to Sugar Ray Leonard, man. That's what that's, I would. That's yeah. 100. Like, but you can't yeah. replace him. You got to pick on the list, man. We already gotta, know who you pick, man. <laughs> I got to I gotta pick from that list. Uh, yeah. How would you yeah. line him up? Yeah, Tilfimo as Roberto Duran. I got tank comparison to um marvelous Marvin Hagler. Um yeah, I guess Ryan Garcia comparable to Tommy Hearns. And then we just got Devin Haney left, you know, the skillful, the skillful young man from Oakland, you know, as the Sugar Ray Leonard comparison. But you know, I would swap out Ryan. For- <laughs> He's just that fifth dude in, you know, for me, I have him ranked fifth out of all those guys, man. Definitely, but yeah, we got some more. We got some more comments here, though. PD people, <laughs> yeah, let's get to the people, man. He said, "I think Teal needs to clean up this WBC problem. Just fight Haney and be undisputed, because right now his claim is being disputed. Right now, right? Yeah, he out here calling dudes paper champions and all this. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. congratulations to him, he stepped up and he took on the challenge that." nobody except myself and a few others that felt like he could he could he could accomplish he could conquer and achieve and he did just that um yeah yeah for sure for, for a lack of better word he's he's in the driver's seat with the four titles right yeah um, but uh he's not because he's in the he's riding shotgun because tank is driving because he's the one that bought the car but um <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that for it. <laughs> but I ain't like I ain't like none of these guys, man. Um, both these guys are good, but you definitely can't be leaving yeah. um Shakur off the list. That's that's pretty disrespectful. But who 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 would you add to the list if you were to add Shakur Stevenson to the list? That's the question. Because it's four, and I always gave my five. You know my five. That's my question. And shout out to everybody out there knocking my question. Yeah, it's my question. Give me your generation of talent out of these five. Out Javon of these five, Davis, yeah. Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, Tiafima Lopez, or Shakur Stevenson. That's my question. 
they be biting my. It's okay. I know you biting. It's all good. You can have, it. but give me credit for it. But um, who would y'all pick in the comment section? Who would you be your generational talent? Who would you add to this to make it a Fab Five? If you watch basketball, you know Michigan had the Fab Five. You know what I'm saying with Jalen Rose, Juwan Howard, Chris Webber, and a few other dudes. Two other dudes that made the Fab Five out of Michigan. You remember that? Yeah, I don't absolutely, know. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. Fab Five, man. So who would be that fifth person? Because I can't even think of a person. Who do you have somebody in mind? We got to come back. That's a show. I'm gonna leave that. That's a show. I'm gonna add it to that. Yeah, no, we could have a whole show on oh, all five of them and where they and where they um where they fall. But yeah, but um everybody listening out there, man, who's your generational talent? Who's the Floyd Mayweather of this group? Who's gonna be that next guy that we talk about? Um, you know, 10, 15 years from now, we say, Yeah, you know, he was the dominant man of his era. Um, who is it? Like he just listed Shakur Stevenson, Devin Haney, Teofima Lopez, Ryan Garcia, or Javante Tank Davis. Mm-hmm. Man, AD, man, we love we love this interaction. But first, Sir Bishop says 135 oh. stay lit. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And then PD, once again, Shakur looks really good from what I've seen of him so far. Shakur is the Pernell Whitaker. Hey, you know what? I could I could I could rock with that. I could rock with that, man. Cause he's hard to hit, man. Ain't nobody hitting Shakur Stevenson. Ain't nobody <laughs> hitting Shakur, huh? Yeah. I ain't I ain't seen nobody hit him clean yet, man. <laughs> Sweet P that era though. He Sweet was, he was, he, was he? he was just well, you know what? He he was on that 84 Olympic team, but he was right. I think he was at a smaller weight than those guys, though. Cause those dudes were like welterweight and above, and he was like a lightweight. Or he may have come just after, like in the middle of that era. Oh, no, nah, that's a show. We gonna make that a show. I would do my homework. That's a show. He wasn't. He wasn't like in that era. He kind of came in the middle, but he wouldn't have been at their weight class to be fighting them. Because by the time he kind of came on, the, you know they were at a higher weight class. But, but definitely Shakur being um. Um, a lack of Pernell Whitaker. That that's a nice comparison, man. He got he got a bit more power than Pernell, but um, definitely the de- the defense is um is on point, man. Yeah, definitely. Listen, man, we're gonna take a little a little break right here and just tell you, you know, what I'm saying, thank you very much for your support. What you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and smash that thumbs up button. You know, what I'm saying, go ahead and, and hit the the subscribe button because it does help with the growth and the visibility of the show. This is a new show. It's called the Way In. You call up on Blog Talk. The Blog Talk number is one not. 914-205-5532. Let us know. Weigh in on the topic that we're talking about right now or jump in the comment section. And you can definitely weigh in because this is your time. We can drop the link, you know what I'm saying, in the comment section for you to jump on live with us and weigh in on the topic. We're talking about uh, uh, Ryan Garcia, his performance, and um, who he should fight next. Who do you think that he should fight next? Just let me know, you know what I'm saying, if you're trying to call up, you're trying to get on live and talk. I'm with it. Greg's with it. We love the interaction. You know what I'm saying? Let's make it happen. Um, and, and and you know what I'm saying? I want to drop this. This is our, this, this our new track. This are... <laughs> yeah, sorry. I just seen something that was nice. Yeah, this is this is our new this is our new new track for the way in. You know what I'm saying? And we want y'all to tell us what you think about it. We're gonna I'm gonna play it for you right now. Um, because it's my show, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna, I do what I do, I do whatever I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do whatever I want to do, man. Who's gonna tell me not to do it? You crazy. Yeah, man. before you play the track, man. Casual bass guy, man. What's up? What Let's up? See. You want to read the rest of them? We got what PD saying. Yo, I think he's talking to Sir Bishop. They just saying what's up to each other. And then PD said, Nice channel. Nice channel here. Hope you guys keep growing for you guys. Absolutely, man. We hope you guys keep growing with us and keep listening and, and supporting us, man. And always tell everybody you know, man. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And like Francis said, man, subscribe, like. And do all that stuff. Hit the bell icon so you know exactly when the show is coming on. Listen, y'all buckle up, man, because we got mad content coming. And, and me, me and Greg, we hungry. We definitely going to build. But here go the track. Let me know what y'all think.
Hold up, it's the weighing. Call up and you're weighing. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing when you think it's about to end. Should we crank it up again? Hold up, weighing. Call up and you're weighing. Now we get to scrutinize everything you're saying. Switching up the topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing and we do this every day. Never ever duck a fade. Hold up. You already know how it go. We never duck a fade. We always looking for people to come up here and talk boxing with us. If you got the knowledge and you think you got it, then come on. We with the smoke. We don't duck it. This is the weigh-in. This is your perfect time for you to get on your scale and see if what you saying got weight. Because if it off balance on the scale, we going to let you know. That's a fact. <laughs> right, Greg? We taking your title from you, man. <laughs> your title on the scale. This is the weigh-in. Don't come up here and lose your title. Don't come up here and lose your title. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know what y'all think, man. Big Crit? Nah, that ain't Big Crit. But shout out to my man, Justo, man. Shout out to Justo. Super talented brother, man. I appreciate you so much. All love, man. Go check that out, man. That's That was something for us specifically, man. I appreciate him so much. Um, you, so much. His, you know what I'm saying? He put his work into that. But yeah, that's our, yeah I got to bump it again. That jump was fire, man. I got to do it. I got to do it again. Hold up. It's the way in. Call up and you're way in. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing when you think it's about to end. Should we crank it up again? Hold up. Way in. Call up and you're way in. Now we get to scrutinize everything you're saying. Switching up the topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing and we do this every day. Never ever duck a fade. Hold up. Yo. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Flames, man. Man. Yes, sir. We in the building. <laughs> Yo, man. We, as you can tell, man, we love what we're doing. We're super excited. We love coming up here and talking boxing with y'all, engaging with everybody. You know what I'm saying? I hope you guys enjoy it too. Tell a friend to tell a friend that you know what I'm saying. The way and we here, man. We here and we ain't going nowhere. We gonna be here. My man, Greg, and we from Canada, man. We Canadian boys and we talking boxing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? As you said, we weigh in. We duck no fate. You know what I'm saying? You can call us up on Blog Talk, man. 914-205-5532. The line is open. You can call now. The lines are open. You can call now. Or I can drop the link right here. You know what I'm saying? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's get back to the topic, man. Let's get back to the topic. So, yeah, we talking who do y'all think that uh, uh, Ryan Garcia should be fighting next. Yeah, man, I want to. I, I still want to see that Devin Haney fight, man. Like, I got to see those two fight. I heard about their amateur fights, um, you know, coming up, and definitely want to see them fight, man. That's the natural. That's the natural fight to get made. That's the easiest fight to get made, you know. That's Devin's mandatory, man. So make it happen. Definitely, absolutely. absolutely. It'd be crazy not to do that, you know what I mean? So, um, let me turn it up for a second. Um, yeah, man, I, I wanted to switch gears real quick and talk about, uh, um, pardon me. I want to talk about, uh, we got no fights for like another week or two. I know, man. And you know, I was sad to hear the UK, they shut down. No, no fights going on in the whole of January, man. So, you know, hopefully they get their things together and, um, you know, we see some good fights coming uh, in February, man. I Definitely. think we got Caleb Plant fighting at the end of the month, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I think he's fighting Caleb Truax on the – can't remember 31st? the date. I'm not – 30th or 31st, something like that, end of the month. We you also know. got, we also got um, um, Stephen Fulton from Philly taking on Angela Leo. They were supposed to fight initially, but um, some COVID situation had stepped in at, at – Okay. Uh, set that apart, and Leo ended up winning the title. So, um, it was for a vacant title, but now Leo is defending the title uh, against um, Stephen Fulton, who was the IBO champion at either that weight or the weight before it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We well, yeah, so the people are waiting. Right now. Yeah, let's get to some of the comments here. Casual base guy says flames. Kaiser so say flames. I guess they're talking about the um the intro. Absolutely, yeah. man. We love. We definitely love it, man. Shout out to Jesto. 
casual base that Greg about to go crazy, man. Not yet, man, but you'll see. You'll see when I do. <laughs> Sir Bishop, good way to start the new year. Uh, Kaiser Soul says straight for the money. He's saying, Davis, this is talking to who should uh, Ryan fight next. Yeah, so that'd be saying, smart. Yeah, he's saying, Davis, Sir Bishop, if Devin, if Devin fights for Tuna first, then Ryan should fight Tank. I agree. I agree. If they're not going to fight each other, then yeah, why not? Go ahead and fight Tank. And then PED said, I heard they're three and three in the amateurs. They could sell the fight on that. You know, definitely. I mean, that's definitely a selling point for me because, I mean, I definitely knew about that three and three record. So, um, definitely a selling point. Selling point. They could settle the score in the pros, man. And and there's a belt on the line. Um, Kaiser so said it's going to be dead in February. Yeah, the UK shut down. Oh, you're you're, you're from? Yeah, shout out to you, man. Hey, man. Yeah, man. I wish I wish some fights were going on this month, man. But uh, yo, you'll get back up and rocking in February. Yo, I'm I'm listen, man. I can't wait to go to the UK. People know how I feel, man. I'm trying to go to the UK. Yeah, man. I know you're a big UK lover. And I love to go over there, man. The fight scene is real hot over there, man. And I'd love to, you know, love to go over there and see how it compares to the North American fight scene, man. You know why we at it? Yeah, hold on a second. Medroy. Big up yourself, way there, yada there, broad. Big up your damn self. You already know what it is, man. My yadis, my Jamaican. Shout out to you, all my yadis in the UK. Shout out to you, man. I, I appreciate y'all, man. Much love, much love. You got some more? Than- so yeah, say so I got Angelo. I don't know. I don't know what you mean, Angel- Angelo. Who? Maybe I'm missing An- it. Angelo Leo. Angelo Leo's fighting Stephen Fulton for the WBO oh. okay, World title because he won that remember they were supposed to fight so that fight is supposed to take place on the 23rd of this month yeah 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 and 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 um that's a that's a big fight that's a big fight um because again i remember i said that they were supposed to fight for the vacant title mm. but uh covid had stepped in i think for fulton he had covid or somebody in his team had covid so the okay, fight so, off. so it, yeah. ended up fighting a replacement for the vacant title and won it so he's saying that he's picking leo based on his work rate I got right. Stephen Fulton in that one. I actually got Stephen Fulton stopping Angelo Lee on that one. Okay, okay. I got cool Steph stopping him. Talk to me. And PD say, yeah, bro, love from the UK. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. Love here from Canada too, man. We tell into, we tell, into, tell, man. tell all the UK people that we here, man. We got you got a yachty from Canada, man. Rocky, yeah, you already know we from the bit, you know, you, you already know that Canada and the UK, they like, you know. Just in case you don't know, I'll let you know. But yeah, man, I appreciate everything uh, that's going on. Caleb Plant, Caleb Plant supposed to be fighting Caleb Truax. Yeah. What do you think about that fight? Do you like that fight? Because remember, um, Truax fought James DeGale, ended up becoming a world world champion, beating yeah. him. Um, and Caleb Plant, who was sought out as being uh, a boxer puncher with great skills. At 116, yeah. who's supposed to be taking on the likes of David Benavides, who's the boogeyman because he just decapitated. He just beat the quote unquote boogeyman who was uh Uskategi. Uskategi, yeah. Like knocking him out. We know what I think right now. He, just gotta, he gotta stay, he need to fight somebody. <clears throat> he can't stay off for too long. And you know, that's a that's a solid fight, man. I mean. I'm not, I'm not complaining about that fight. You know, he gets through that, and then uh, we see what's up on the horizon after that, man. Whether he yeah. gets in there with Benavidez or something shakes up with a Canelo or, you know, a Billy Joe Saunders. We'll see, man. You know, even the 168-pound division is not bad. Um, I don't know if anybody like a Charlo might want to go up. I mean, I might, he don't probably only want to go up to face Canelo, but, um, you know, that 160 to 168 weight classes, man, it's like, you know, there's some fights to be made, man. Yeah, Sir Bishop says Plant beats Truax easily. So. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Before that, before that, BRB, I need another coffee. It's still 3.50 a.m. here. Yo, shout out to the... Yo, yo appreciate that, man. <laughs> yo, shout out to all my UK people out there, man. Y'all up early in the morning. I appreciate you so, so much. Yeah, um, 
Yeah, Plant B, Truex, easily. Yeah, one would think so. You, you can't overlook Caleb Truex, man. He tough as rocks, man. Also, they fighting on the 30th, so they fighting the week after Angelo Leo and um, Stephen Fulton from Philly. Cool boy, Steph, will be fighting. So um, that will be the week after. So we ending up the month pretty strong. I would like I'd like to thank. I, we ended up the month good, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Yo, Eric Cruz, what up? Big drama show in the house. Yeah, Eric Cruz, man. Yo, Eric, man, yo, we got to get you on. Listen, man, you got to come on the stream, man. We got to get you on the stream. Anybody want to be in the stream, let me know in the chat. I'll drop the link for you. Yo, Eric Cruz, man, what do you think about, um? they talk about Golovkin and Mungia as a possibility, man. What do you think about that? Yeah, let's, let's switch gears real quick, man. What do y'all think about Jaime Mungia taking on Triple G? We know Mungia just fought uh, Toronto Johnson. And, you know, a lot, a few people would like to say, that he was getting, you know, hit a little bit more than he that he needed to. I was saying he got hit more than he needed to. Let me oh, stand with my chest straight up and broad. You understand? But Chief G looked super slow against Ceramente. So we all Mungia got pop. He 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 a big 160 pounder. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. GGG got pop too. And GGG gets hit too. That's why this is a good fight. Mungia gets hit. Both fighters don't really fight well going backwards. This is a pure fire fight. Barn burner. What'd you yeah. take? No, I 100% agree with that, man. That's fireworks all day, man. Because both of them come forward and they both get hit a lot. So um, that would be an excellent fight, man. You know, But does it make sense right now? Um, it all depends. I mean, I know, uh, what's his name? Uh, Golovkin, obviously he's campaigning for that, you know, third Canelo fight, but I don't know if that's going to happen. He may have to move up and wait to get it because Canelo's staying put at 160 from, um, what Eddie Reynoso was saying. So, um, yeah, that's a good, that's a good fight at 60, but I mean, I'd like to see Golovkin in there with say Andre or, or Charlo, like, you know, fight. Fight some real dudes, man. Not not to knock Mungia, but I mean, I'd personally just like to see him in there, you know, with those other guys, to be honest with you. That's going to bring something to the table, man. Yo, shout what? out to Caesar So who says, easy fight for Plant. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't want to overlook your 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 um your, your, your chat that you dropped. I appreciate you very much. Um, Casual Bass Guy says, Plant versus Truex, fire, 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 man, fight of the year. I see Caleb doing... What daring to be great? See, a lot of people wouldn't feel that way, but we're gonna come back to that in a few minutes. But yeah, um, Triple G is the only fighter that nobody he calls him great, and he stays in one division. It's in the heavyweight division where I mean, going down is like out of the question, right? And going up, there is no going up. You are in the highest division to go. So exactly. yeah, when you have fights in other divisions, it, what's stopping you from stepping up and taking those fights? Exactly. I want Eric Cruz to let me know, or anybody that's a GG fan. You know what I'm saying? They told Andre Ward, you got to move up. You told this person, you got to move up. But GGG got to stay here, and Canelo must come down now to accommodate him. Why? Nah, man. He had his opportunity. You fought him twice at 160, and you didn't get the job done, man. Like, as simple as that. Who got the, he, It doesn't mean <laughs> he had the WBO title at 160. Sorry? Who has, no, who has the WBO title at 160? Andre does. Dimitri Middleweight, Andre. yeah, Andre has it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If I fight the champions that got a belt, Charlo. Come on, man, let's unify the division, man. Charlo and Andre, man, fight one of those guys. Oh yeah, like honestly, Golovkin, Golovkin at this point in his career has no business fighting the guys he's fighting. Fight big fights, like the rest of his career should be just big fights with big names. You know, he should have been for Andre Ward years ago. Hmm. You know. Years ago, he, oh, no. he dug yeah. that bit for sure. Yeah, dug, you know, what I mean? not so, small Floyd Mayweather and ducking Andre Ward, who's in your division. <laughs> yeah, Crap. I know, I know Mayweather to come up and fight him. Like, come on, man. I know he wants to break Bernard Hopkins' record for the most title defenses and stuff like that, but even if he does, I can't give him full credit for it just based on the fact of who he's fighting, man. Like, I'm sorry, you could break that record, but you're fighting nobodies, you know. Yep, definitely. I actually want to I have a topic I want to get on before we get out of here. I want to close with it, but I just want to remind you of that. So remind me that I have a topic I want to close with, okay? Okay. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, Eric Cruz says Mungia gets hit too much. Uh GGG gets hit, 
but not hurt. W- what's the difference, Cruz? Please tell me. Please tell me. He gets hit. And, and so you're trying to tell me that, but you said Mungia gets hit too much, but have you seen him hit and hurt? He would be like the same thing for, for GGG. He gets hit, but he doesn't get hurt. And he ends up finishing because Ter- Johnson was on him like a blanket. I'm I'm not sure if he felt any of those punches, but he starched him, split his lip in two. His lip is still flying in the air somewhere, man. I'm flying in the air somewhere. <laughs> nasty. He just gave him a scar for life. Oh, yeah, for sure, oh, man. Oh, a nasty uppercut. <sighs> so, you know what I'm saying? You got to understand that 168, Keezer, he said 168. What was his question? 168. I'm trying to make sure I understand. Oh, easy fight for plant. 160. I'm not sure what you mean by 168. Oh, GGG scared yeah. 168. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely scared at 168. I would agree with y'all 100%. Yeah. I, you know what? I wouldn't even say scared. I just, to me, he doesn't seem like he hasn't he has anything to prove at 168. He doesn't have the desire to go to 168. So he's like, yo, forget that. I'm going to stay at the weight that I want to stay at and do what I want to do. But it's hard to say, you know what I'm saying, you're going to build great legacy when dudes are going four and five weight divisions, not only yeah. to win, be a champion, but to unify. Like, that's greatness. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That, that's greatness. You can't deny that. That's first ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah. No, I agree, man. I think there might have been a slight difference had he been, if he was like the undisputed middleweight champion and he's just defending his titles, there might have been a little bit, you know, you might have have a little bit of slack towards him, but Yo, this guy's for him to fight that he's just not fighting. You know? You know, make that Charlo fight. Make that Andre fight. You know what I mean? Like, there's fights there to be made. You know? And years ago, when that wasn't the case, he could have moved up and fought Andre Ward, but he didn't. So, I mean, that's him. That's on him for how his legacy looks, man. And now he's fighting, you know, these journeyman, no-name dudes that, you know, are just padding his his defense record that (laughs) is, um, you know, but I mean... It holds no weight to me, man. It right. holds no weight to me. He, so, he might be Bernard Hopkins, but it doesn't mean nothing, man. I'm a Canadian. I'm glad that Steve Rose got the bag, but come on, man. Steve Rose and then Sarah Mente after, man. And, and, and Canelo's supposed to do what with that? Yeah. <laughs> hey, what is Canelo supposed to do with that? Your yeah. last match who? <sighs> yeah, so... um. Casual Bass Guy says, GGG beating a young bull would give his name a little more light. But that's the only name aside from Andre and Charlo I'd accept. Do you agree or disagree? No, I could rock with that. It does give him a little bit more night, more light to his um name. Because, I mean, yeah, Mungia is a name that is known out there and he's a young guy. So, I mean, yeah, it might shine a little bit of light on on his career, but I mean, it does nothing to his legacy because um, Andre Charlo, those are, those are the legacy fights for him at this point in his career. I don't think he's going to get that third Canelo fight unless he moves up to 68 and Canelo might not be even interested in fighting him anymore. Cause as far as yeah. he comes, he might, I beat you twice, you know, <laughs> you know, even though one was considered a draw, Canelo's probably like, I beat you twice, dude. So um, yeah. I'm done. he might be yeah. done with triple. You had two chances and you didn't make it clear. Get out of yeah. here. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't think no fighter is scared. I'm gonna put that out there. No fighter is scared. You gotta take heart to live a fighter's lifestyle, first of all, which is tough as hell. And two, to get between them ropes, knowing that a man got two weapons on his hands is gonna take your head off. Oh, they ain't scared. Yeah, they they're not scared. business wise. And um, sometimes the business of boxing gets in the way. And, oh, yeah. Uh, we're seeing that right here. Yeah, man. A lot of times, listen, a lot of these guys have fought each other in the amateurs that we all haven't seen or maybe we don't know, but these guys aren't afraid of each other, man. And Kaiser, yeah. they have yeah, uh, Triple G, Triple G scared. And Eric Cruz um, says Mungia gets hurt. I don't know. I've never seen him get hurt, to be honest with you. I haven't and seen him get hurt. I've seen him, I, 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 I seen him rob somebody, though. <laughs> yeah. In Mexico. Yeah. Somebody named Dennis Hogan, but we'll keep it moving. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, and Mario Munguia, you tripping, man. You laughing at my boy. Go ahead. Sir Bishop. Sir Bishop, uh, I don't think Munguia has enough power to hurt Triple G. I think GGG has enough power to knock out Munguia. GGG takes a better punch. Well, he's proven that. 
I agree with that one hundred percent. He's proven that he got he got some uh, whiskers on him there, man. Iron chin. You yeah. I mean? Big shots from Canelo, man. Some shots that Canelo knocked dudes out like Kirkland and all these other I mean, big shots and kept coming forward. So yeah, he definitely. Yeah. Um, Shout out to James Kirkley, man. I know he didn't have the fight he wanted the other day, man. But you know, I think I think he needs to. I think he needs to sit down now. It's hard. It's hard, man. Well, that's the only thing you know how to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me not put words in his mouth because I don't know that. I, I take that back. It's hard to step away from the sport that you love. I'll say that. Yeah. Yeah. You know that is true. That is true for a lot of athletes. You know that's hard to step away from the sport that they've done most of their lives since they were kids. You know what I mean? So. Um, but shout out to James Kirkland, man. He he's a fighter that I liked um looking at coming up. And we got Kaiser Sose saying Mungia coming from 154. Yeah, but he he a big 154 though, man. He's always been a big guy. I think 160 might be the weight class for him though, man. Cause we saw him fight um who was it he fought there from from our neck of the woods? Uh Brandon Cook, and he was just much bigger than him at 154. He was a big one fifty four pound man. Yeah, I, 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 to be yeah. honest with you, I ain't gonna lie, sir Bishop, Eric, y'all really underestimate Jaime Mungia. Can't underestimate. It. You know what I'm saying? The kid has shown that he got power. Okay, yeah. I want what which he was struggling to make, meaning that when he got in the ring more time, he was less than what he should have been. Yeah, and he still ended up doing the job. Now you bring him up to a weight where he can eat a little bit more. Which is what six pounds? He put six more pounds on. Right, right. Um, that was his first or second fight at 160. GGG, his only fight at 160. Right. I think when he gets in the ring and he understands it, um, I don't know about stopping GGG, but he can definitely put a whooping on him. Because Father Time oh. is undefeated. Yeah, because I mean it could be a very similar fight for the Derevchenko fight. That kind yep. of like war, you know what I mean? So and, and Jaime's way bigger than Derevchenko. Yeah, exactly. And he's bigger than him too, right? So yeah. I mean, I mean, that's a good that's a good fight, and it's a challenging fight. I don't think Triple G is not, it's not gonna be a light touch for either of them, man. And like you said, you know, Triple G is on the back end of his career with his age and stuff like that. So when is that gonna show? We don't know, but Mungia's a young lion, man. And I agree with you, Francis. I mean, you should put a little bit of respect on his name, you know what I mean. He's a young lion. And you clearly yeah. see young boys right now. They ain't playing. They're not yeah. playing. They're going for it, man. Five, five, four, five, five. They ain't playing. Yeah. Man, young boys in multiple divisions that ain't playing. You got to understand, boxing is in a great place. They ain't not playing. Yeah. Like, for real, they going for the gusto. So if that fight was to be made, that would be a, that would be a hell of a fight, man. Absolutely. Be a hell of a fight. Be a real hell of a fight. Go ahead. Casual base guy said Mungia strikes me like he'd fight up to the level of competition. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. CBG. I, yeah, See, I, I agree. Talk with you exactly because I always say, man, if you the competition you always rise to the competition. He know that's gonna be a big night. Yeah, the light's gonna be bright. Why not? He's still a golden boy, right? Jaime. Uh, is he a golden boy? I think yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. He's still, I think he's still a golden boy. I know he fought on the zone, but they, yeah, they got a relationship with Golden Boy. I believe he still is. Yeah, definitely. So let me let me double check that before I say definitely. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. So, uh, oh, we got another comment from Rafi Ramirez, ninety three. The Fight is competitive. That's all fight fans want. Absolutely, man. That's what we want from, you know, any fight that we watch. We just want to see competitive, good fights. And those two would definitely make it a competitive fight. And, you know, fireworks, man. Complete fireworks, man. They both have a come forward style. And, you know, it's the the irresistible force meeting the immovable object kind of thing, man. So definitely a crash course. And kind of, who did Mungia fight at 154? Who did he fight at 154 of name? I guess we could we could look that up. Yeah, I'm about to tell you right now. If I can get okay, that. You want that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I spelled it wrong. Clearly, yeah. That was me. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a good fight. But yo, you guys let us know. What fights do you want to see for 2021, man? You know, there's a lot of different possibilities in the lightweight division, 168. 
the heavyweights, obviously. Um, what's the fight that you want to see? You know, there's many, 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 many matchups that could happen this year. You know, they have the heavyweights with the the big three with Joshua, Fury, and Wilder. You know, you have 168. You got Canelo. You got Billy Joe Saunders, Caleb Plant, Benavid- David Benavides. Um, so many good matchups to make. And then obviously welterweights, you got, you know, the big one we want to see, you know, Errol Spence. Yep. Terry Crawford. That's the big one. Pacquiao is still in the mix. You know, Sean Porter is still in the mix, like always. And then, I mean, like we let off the show with, you know, the the lightweight division is just, you know, so much talent, you know. So, I mean, what fights do you guys want to see, man? You could either call in, leave a comment, or um, join the chat, you know. So, um, yeah. He fought Patrick Alati, who's 40-3. Okay. Takashi Inoue, which is Nayao. Which is not in U.S. brother. Don't bite your lip, man. <laughs> I, I'm gonna get yeah. that down, man. It's Nayo, Nayoe, Nayoe. There you go. Uh, he fought Liam Smith at 154. He won a 12 round decision. Canelo fought Liam Smith at 154. 154. Or was it 160? Say that again. Liam Smith when he fought. Um, Canelo at San in San Antonio. It was, was at fifty four. At fifty four, right? It was at fifty four. Yeah. Right. He fought Saddam Ali. Sh- should I keep going? Like he was getting some. He was That's getting right. Some yeah. Game. Yeah. Right at at, at one sixty. So I mean one fifty four. So his first fight at one sixty was against Gary O'Sullivan, Spike O'Sullivan, who, yes, you know what I'm saying, ended up being uh, 30, at the time he had 30 wins and two losses. Yeah. Stepped in there, knocked him out in the 12th round. And then, that was his introduction to the uh, middleweight division, and he fought Torino to Johnson, who was 21 and 1 and 1, before he took that, that six round uh, um, RTD, which is a uh, retired, you spit his leg. Yeah. Second fight. You guys are not putting, so he got two TKOs at 160 for his first two fights at 160. And y'all trying to tell me that he can't, he can't, he can't put some work on GGG? Y'all playing, man. Come on, man. guys. Man. I believe it, but everybody's in totality to their opinion, but that's how I, I believe that uh, he'll definitely be able to, um, Definitely be able to uh, put that work in. For sure, man. Let's get back to the comments here. Kaiser Sohe, Sose say, yeah, he's saying he's still with Golden Boy. And then, yep. um, so yeah, like I asked um, what fights do people want to see? So uh, Rafi Ramirez, 93, said he wants to see Ortiz and Dillian White. Yeah, that is a good fight. Um, and Sir Bishop agrees that that Hold is on. a good fight. You, one, you read the one before? I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that. Like me, like, kind of, okay. and then the one beneath it, Rafi. The fight is in competitive, and that's all fight fans want. Yeah, yeah, I got focus. Cool. Yeah, I think we got everybody. And then what were we at? Oh, Kaiser says Benavidez versus Canelo. Yep, I, you know that'd be a really good fight, actually. So you mean to Rafi- tell me, hold on a second? Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. You mean to tell me that we've been on for an hour and three minutes? And not one person's call. We need one caller. This is our first show of the year 2020. We rolling that. We need one person yeah. to call in. We need one person to jump on and talk to us. We open this for y'all. Let it rock. Yeah, it was going to be. 914-205-5532. 914-205-5532. Let's get back to the, 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 the fights that people want to see. Yeah, so Rafi Ramirez says he wants to see Ruiz and Wilder. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe it'll get made. Sir Bishop, yeah, he likes that one too. He also likes Plant versus Benavides. And Sir Bishop says Wilder and Dillian White. Yeah, I want to see that one myself, to be honest with you. And Mr. PBC, welcome. He wants to see Errol versus Pac-Man. Yeah, I, I want to see that fight because I want to see Errol. Um, I want to see what to happen, man. It, well, it's still, we never know. It still might happen. It still might happen. Yeah. Absolutely. And that'd be a, obviously a unification fight. So, yeah, we want to see that one. 
casual bass guy, he says, bro, who in the world does Tank fight next if they keep that energy of them being the A-side and the B-side can't offer a fight? Struggle to find opponents for him that are sexy besides the tippy top. I mean, but listen, Javante is the A-side, so I mean... Whoever he chooses, that's what the A-side does. He is the A-side. Yeah! I'm, let me read the question again. Man, who the world will tank fight next if they keep that energy of them being the A side and the B side can't offer a fight? Struggle to find opponents for him. What listen, you're seeing Ryan Garcia trying to trying to make himself get the fight with Tank Davis. So I mean, B sides don't have no right to offer. I mean, you can petition, but you can't offer a fight. No, we know what Francis. No, they could offer they could offer the fight as long as they maybe they play in the B position. Ryan trying to offer the fight like he the A side. Oh no, you better talk that talk. You know what I'm saying? He, he <laughs> up. <laughs> you could ask the fight for the fight, but you got to play a position, man. Like you did an interview the other day with Mr. Haney, and they talked about listen, it's cool to be the B side. You know what I mean? Depends on who you're fighting, man. Like somebody got to be the B side, and they understand the business of boxing, man. Everybody can't be the A side, and right now, Javante Davis. Is the A side, you know what I mean? Just is what it is. Facts. Yeah, and casual base guy, he's he's saying he won't he won't be fighting any of the top guys. But why not though? I mean, <laughs> Who, he's the, oh, I mean he, Tank. He's saying Tank won't be fighting any of the top guys. What you mean? I, he will be fighting the top guys. He's the A side though. That, that's just yeah. what everybody realized that. Like he the, was the top guy. He was the four division. Our champion, yeah, and he got the pay per view numbers to back him. He got like he's no, just he's the no, but I'm saying like Ryan hasn't been on pay per view or anything like that, you know what I mean? So, I mean, they offering the fight like they're the a side, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I don't think that's the right approach for Ryan to make, yeah. man. What are you gonna offer him and say, Oh, let's fight? No, Tank not offering, yeah, he he, he been offered, been offered Ryan to fight from a long time. Like Ryan been calling him out, calling him, oh, I can knock Tank out. He wants to show him that you only, you don't have it. I'm gonna put you down, okay? But in terms of the young guy, they want him to build up their 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 cachet. The problem yeah. is with the whole promoter, the size of the street. Tank ain't fighting on top rank. No, sorry, the top rank. I shouldn't say that. Fra- Tank Showtime pay per view. But that's right. He's going to be on pay-per-view. That's right. Yeah. Time pay-per-view. Not the zone. You know what I'm saying? Maybe ESPN and Showtime can make a deal. Or Fox. Right. They might have to move that to Fox pay-per-view and make a mm-hmm. deal. And that can happen. But that's what we're dealing with right now. Those are the type of things that we have to deal with. Oh, shoot. We got a caller. We got a caller. Let's get him on right now. All right. Who this is? Come on, unmute. Unmute. Yo, 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 yo. hello. Yo, Who this is? Up? Who is this? Who is this? Yo, this is Rafi Ramirez, 93. Just wanted what? to chop it up, talk some boxing with you boys. What's Rafi going on? Ramirez, what's up? Thank you very, very much for being our first caller. Talk to us. Let us know what's going on. Where are you from? I'm from Van City, baby. Vancouver, West Coast, Canada. Van- Yo, Vancouver, stand Yo! Yeah, shout out, man. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. The building, yo. What up? <laughs> yo, it's all good, boys, man. I'm here, man. I'm a fan. I, I want to talk boxing. I love I love this shit you guys got going on. I love the uh, gap. I love the energy. I love it, man. What you want to talk about? Who, who specific topic you want to talk about? I don't know. We could talk about it all, brother. I'm here. I'm all right. boxing. All right, bet. So, 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 what you think about what you think about GGG and Jaime Mungia? That potential fight happening. Yeah, I think it's a firecracker of a fight. I like it. Both pressure fighters, both willing to go at it. Both a step up fight for each other because they need to put themselves on notice. I like it, man. Awesome. Uh, what about uh, what? Who should? Who should? Because that was our initial question. Ryan Garcia fight next, given he right. has a mandatory 
with Devin Haney? Okay, I like the mandatory fight, but dude, they got they got to have some fans. They need some fans, bro. Like I'm all for it, but if you're gonna have them up against Devin Haney or against Tank or or Teofimo, you need fans. So I, I'm not here for these like half-ass shows with like separated seating and stuff. I'm, I'd rather wait and have like fan interactions and make it a spectacle than to just rush into the sport and rush into the fight, you know? But I want to see that Haney fight. They got, they got, they got beat from amateurs. They yeah. got, they, they're well known, well respected, but I think, I think that's a solid one. I like it a lot. Yeah, no, I think they should do that Haney fight first and then get to tank. Like you said, if there's fans later on, that'd be a huge fight with fans involved. Yeah, that's like the Oscar versus Floyd type fight for this generation, you know? Right, right. I agree. I agree. And what about Tank, man? Like, um, we're here talking about Tank being the A side. Um, who do you think he should fight next? If it's not Ryan Garcia, who else would you like to see him fight? If it's not Ryan Garcia, at, at thirty five though, or at thirty, he's got to stay at thirty five. Um, I don't. That fight probably be at thirty five. I would think. It's got to be, dude. I would yeah. think it's at 35 because that's where the money is. That's a lightweight division. Yeah, for sure. But who do you think he should I, fight if he I doesn't get like, the fight with Ryan? I want to see, listen, bro. I want to see Teofimo fight Cambosis. I want to see. Hold on, stop there. Hey, hold on, hold on, on. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. What do you mean you want him to fight Cambosis next? <laughs> You no, gotta explain that to, to me. Cambosis, bro. Why? That's a mandatory. He's a res- he's a respectable fighter. You're gonna have a big crowd in Australia. That's good money fight for both of them. Or is it New Zealand or Australia? One of the two. It's bro. Australia. New Zealand. Okay. New Zealand. My bad. No, it's Australia. Yo, that's a. It's Australia. Bro. Yeah, it's he's Australia. A respectable fight. You know, he's he's been he's been in the ring with Pacquiao. They've been sparring. Bro, I think that's a good fight. With, in the sense of Tank, I got to see him against one more step of fight in the lightweight. I got to see him, see what he does. So you and don't believe I in don't the power? What's up? So you don't believe in the power? No, I believe in the power at 130. You go to 135 and you put a guy wow. that's going to hit him like the way Leo hit him, bro, he's going to have some problems. Wow. Oh, man. Uh, you don't think he can carry that power up to 135? I disagree, man. I think I think no, one thirty, one thirty. I think one thirty, one thirty-five. Yeah, Javante Tanks David knocks out most, if not all, opponents at one thirty and one thirty-five. Okay, but the thing is, bro, I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah, I think he's, I think he's got the power at at whatever weight class. That guy's got the torque. He's got the compact, like fucking the jolt. But bro, you put a guy that knows how to box him. So give me a, a name. Guy that's gonna tap him and hit him. In the 135? Yeah, in 135, I that think, you think, think will be a challenge. I, I think Teofimo beats him. I think Ryan Garcia has a chance to beat him, but I don't know if he does beat him. Whoa. I think he beats... I think... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he beats Lomachenko. If Lomachenko takes the fight against Tank, Tank washes him. But you put a guy, a slick, tall, Devin Haney-type fighter, boxer, nice little fucking... Uh, Stick and move type jab. Sorry, I'm like shadow boxing, not trying to describe it all, but <laughs> I love it. it. No, that's dope, man. <laughs> you put a Devin Haney, bro. You put a Devin Haney against his tank, he's gonna pitch a shutout. Tank's gonna get frustrated, he's gonna get emotionally attached, and he's gonna try to be shooting those wide shots, those big, those big uppercuts, and Haney washes him, bro. I love it. I love it. So who okay, my final question to you. I actually have two questions, right. and then I got to get you up out of here because we're about to close just now. That's all good. Um, and I appreciate you. But let me get this off first. I appreciate you very much, man. Um, yeah, as man. a man, to, to hear another Kenyan <laughs> supporting is, is amazing, man. Tell a friend to tell a friend, man. Vancouver, I can't wait to come to Vancouver. Never Boy. been, and I'm trying to come out there. When I come out I'm there, fun with it, bro. I'm linking with Rafi, man, for sure. Um, Yo, Rafi, sorry, yeah. Yeah. how's the fight out there, man? You? Oh, my guy. <laughs> my guy, say that you speak in my language. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so here go my two questions. Question. Let's go. Yeah, here yeah. my two questions. So my t- my first question is: out of these five names, who is your generational talent? 
Javante Tank Davis, Devin Haney, Leo Santa Cruz. Sorry, excuse me, Teofimo yeah. Lopez, but Leo Santa Cruz. <laughs> you yeah. and uh, Ryan Garcia. Just pure boxing talent, or like superstardom as well. That's I'm talking about. Who's your Floyd Mayweather of this generation? I don't mean skill set. I mean in terms of being the best of that crop, that total era, package. right? Mm -hmm. Not not even the total yeah, package. Just who's gonna be standing at the best of that era? Teofimo. Right now, like if Teofimo's the guy, unless proven otherwise, because he's the man that beat the man. He's got the mouth. He's got the like charisma. He's got the attitude where he's willing to go at it with anyone. Come on, bro. Teofimo, I got Tank next though. I do like Tank, but I think I think that I just think they're building up Tank. They're building them and they're selling them to the people, you know. Well, myself and my co-hosts are rolling with Shakur Stevenson as our generation. Yeah, okay, that's a good one. That's a that's a good one too. That's a good one. But he's small, bro. He's got to he's got to build his way up. He's got to fight a Burchell. He's got to fight a Valdez. He's gonna he's gonna he's up on his own. He's a knockout, bro. He's a beast, though, bro. He is a, anyone that fucking <laughs> Prince. Come on, bro. That's elite, elite of the elite. Exactly. And my final question to you is: Um, who do you want to see Tyson Fury fight next? Deontay Wilder in the third fight, or AJ for undisputed? Fuck, that's a close one. I want to see. I want to see the AJ fight. I gotta see the AJ fight. Wilder, man, yo, he looked like shit last fight, dude. He's too one-dimensional. He's got that power, but you got to put a guy like Dillian White type guy against him. I, I, I want to see the AJ fight. I love it. Thank I just want to see what Eddie Hearn's reaction. I want to see Eddie Hearn's reaction when when he gets washed, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I don't know. Man. I, I love the guy. I love what you guys are doing, bro. Keep it up, please. I, like, hey, you gotta, oh, man. You got to in, in Canada. You got. I really respect you guys' opinions, and uh, I'm having fun with it. You know, you guys know how to have fun with the, with the whole sport, and we need this shit. But Rafi, let me tell you something, man. We appreciate you, and you have a home right here, man. You, all you, you, you people that love boxing over there in Vancouver, you have a home here. We ain't going nowhere. We did this for y'all, man. We did this for all the Canadians out there who don't got the show, and and, and for, for the for the people around the world that I've met, you know, in America and in the UK, stand up. We appreciate you, and we hope that you enjoy what we're doing, because. You know what I'm saying? We got a lot more content, a lot more interviews, a lot more stuff coming your way. Just keep it locked. We'll catch you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 p.m. Eastern time. No cap. Yeah, I'll be here. Then you're chopping it up. Love it. Keep doing Love it. Man. Thank you. Peace out, man. Appreciate Bless you. Bless Vancouver, you. stand up, baby. Yeah. yeah. Van City. BC butt only. Van Sticky. All day. Peace. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, that was our first caller, man. Yeah, I gotta say, you're in the history books, man. You're the first caller, man. So you're in the history books now, man. You, you got him down? I got him down, man. We call that day one. Yeah. Day one. <laughs> yeah. Hey, ring the alarm, man. Hey, ring the alarm. There but, we go. But yeah, man, we appreciate it. Yo, <laughs> Yo. bunch of comments. Um, you know, during that, you know, great fight talk. So um, what we were talking about Tank just before the, um, that phone call. So, um, what was it? Casual base guy was saying Tank's not offering them youngins a fight. Um, check out them lightweight rankings and let me know who's he fighting potentially. And then he's like, oh, you mean Leo from 126? I guess he's getting on Tank for fighting a, a smaller guy in Leo Santa Cruz, but um, <laughs> it's all good, man. Uh, Kaiser says... I know. Uh, I gotta, what, do you, what do you mean? What do you mean, Leo at 126? Leo was 126, and he moved four divisions, man. Pacquiao, eight. Come on, you got to put some respect on it. I know Tio might be a little, I mean, I know Leo might be a little bit light in the wallet, but come on, man. He was out there giving it his all, man. He was out man, there giving it his all, and yeah. he earned it. You know what I'm saying? He earned the position that he got into. And good win, though, because Leo came strapped. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Tank got a fight <laughs> they put in front of him. You see, they following the green print, not the blueprint, yeah. the green print. The they green print. Million dollar man's green <laughs> print. Don't forget it, man. Put some respect on that man's name. Go ahead. Absolutely. So Kaiser said he wants to see um, Burchell and Gary Russell. And Sir Bishop is saying not to forget. Um, don't forget Shakur. 
does it ma- and PED said does it matter weight division? I guess talking about Shakur, I guess it doesn't really matter what weight division he's in. And PED said AJ. PED said undisputed. So I guess he wants to see Tyson Fury face AJ. Yeah, it yeah. seems like a lot of people want to see that. Yeah, I think a lot of people just want to get back to a point where there is an undisputed champion. And, you know, maybe people seen enough of the Tyson Fury Wilder um, two fights that they feel like, you know, Tyson Fury might just beat him again, maybe even easier. But I only want to see the Wilder Fury fight because I feel he deserves, um, sorry, that Fury owes Wilder that fight just based on, you know, how everything went down. So I think they should fight first. And then we see the undisputed. Perfect. Well, listen, man, we got to get up out of here. We got to get up out of here. We got to go. We thank you so very much for tuning in with us every Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday for the weigh-in. You come up here and you weigh in your thoughts and we let you know if you're going to lose your title on the scale or if you're going (laughs) to fight. You know what I'm saying? The number to call in, man, is 914-205-5532. If you in Canada... 90 seconds. Long distance charges apply. <laughs> you up. Also, you know what I'm saying? If uh, uh, you want to get on the stream, just say so. I drop the link. You click it. You come on and you talk to us. And we appreciate you. Also, we're going to get a number for you to call. You're going to connect with us right here. We appreciate you so, so, so very much. Um, tell a friend to tell a friend. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Absolutely. We're starting this year right. Go ahead. Get it off. Yeah, for sure, man. Everybody, thank you for joining us. And follow us. Next Up Sports Talk, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. Follow me, WB Boxing, all the latest news, Instagram, YouTube. And yeah, just keep rocking with us, man. New show to weigh in. That's what we're here for. We're here for you to weigh in on the sport of boxing and just let us know what you think. And like Francis said, man, call in. Um, or he can send you the link and uh, we get it popping, man. Let's go. Let's go, man. We out, y'all. Catch you on the next one. Hold up. It's the way in. Call up and you're way in. Now we get to talk about everything you're saying. Analyzing topics, dropping knowledge. We ain't playing when you think it's about to end. Should we crank it up again? Hold up. Way in. Call up and you're way in. Now we get to scrutinize everything you're saying. 